Hello guys, MonkeyBot here, and we finally got the Kislev edition to Shadow to Change 2.0. Apologies that this video is a little bit later uh, than the other two. I was out of the house when the blog was released, and I've just come home, and I'm now recording it now. Uh, I have read through the blog already, so I already know what's in it, so I'm just going to pick out the important things for you guys, give my opinions on them, and uh, yeah, just let you know what I think. So let's get straight into it. The first important thing that we need to know is that the release date has been confirmed for Thursday the 22nd of February. I will be doing a stream that evening. Um, I'm going to put a poll up on my channel shortly after this video so everyone can vote which one of the three legendary lords you would like me to play. But I will be doing a stream as soon as it has been released that evening or morning, whatever time it is in uh, your local time zone. And then we're just going to move on here. Uh, so we've got the Kislev 8th edition uh, section part here. This is basically talking about a bit of the law and the fact that Mother Estankia is going to be getting her own book. The reason why um, the Mother Estankia is the only hag mother in the game now, which I still think is a bit bizarre. And the, the fact that Ungors and Gospodars are kind of like merged into one now. They're not really split into two. But it's a little bit of a law Um snippet here if you want to dive deep into that so next we're going to be moving on to the kislev editions uh yes it talks about uh the kislev content yes so we're going to be getting a new spell law for mother estankia and the hag mothers which is going to be the law of hags which is very interesting to be honest but i'll get on to that later down in the uh, blog here and yeah this is where it talks about mother estankia um being the only hag mother so we're moving down and now we're getting on to the law of hags now the law of hags is um a really interesting law it's very very unique so if i go down to here so we've got the law attribute here i think this is the passive and this is kind of like a um sort of how the law of magic works throughout it tends to buff and uh debuff your allies and enemies so it's got a dual effect kind of thing so i think this is the passive uh so this is an area of hexes uh fate of inter interlopes interlopers i don't know maybe i'm saying that wrong um but then for example the curse will be a minor decrease to the leadership so this would be for your enemies and then the blessings will have an increase of spell resistance so it debuffs the enemies and it buffs the um, the ally units all at the same time. Uh, and it's got a really nice effect going through without. They normally have the negative effect for the enemies and then the reverse effect for the allies. So if we go down here, we have the Curse of Forbidden Fens. Uh, the area of hexes is... It uh, negatively affects enemy speed, charge speed, and vigor. And then for the positive version of that, uh, it positively positively affects allied speed charge speed vigor whilst granting a strider and unspottable so it does the opposite effect here if we go on to the next spell it damages units in its path and applies a poison contact effect so everyone that get hit by this will be poisoned and then the other thing damages units in its path applies a contact effect to friendly units which heals them uh, boosts their vigor and making them immune to enemy contact effects. So instead of getting poisoned, they become immune. Instead of taking damage, they get healed. So the opposite effect again. So Curse of the Ancient Witch. Uh, so negative effects here. Uh, it negatively affects missile block chance armor and will spread to nearby enemies within the spell spread range. Uh, and this one gives magical attacks, pos positively enhances armor piercing missile damage, base damage and missile and reload skill. Uh, very nice. And then I think there's, so there's a few more down here. Yeah, so three more. Uh, the Curse of Vengeance of Spirits damages enemies within the radius and applies a uh, the silence attribute, which stops um affected units from being able to use abilities or cast spells okay so this puts uh if you could work it to use this on spell casters they won't be able to use their spells for a few seconds and the opposite effects so the blessing enhances the flow of winds of magic in favor of your allies spell casters dealing damage in the process so it, i guess this gives winds of magic but you take damage to gain that uh extra winds and then you've got Cursed Cauldron. Um, 
A static central vortex fires out projectiles that spawn smaller moving vortexes upon impact. This looks really cool. I really like this spell. Um, I think this is a great uh, addition to the um, to the uh, hag magic. The blessed version of that is the same vortex as above, but the vortex no longer harms enemy units that are caught in the area of effect. So it has the opposite effects it just it doesn't do friendly fire basically so it's just a damage spell for enemies and it doesn't do anything to your allied units uh next uh we have negatively affects enemies base weapon damage armor piercing weapon damage melee attack and inflict rampage and then the blessed version is increases base weapon damage armor piercing weapon damage melee attack and inflicts rampage so one of them debuffs their damage one in but uh buffs the damage but they both gained the rampage battle effect so that's it for the law of hags i think it's a really cool unique law uh having two opposite effects that happen both at the same time to all of the allies and enemies within the area i think is really nice and really unique uh now getting on to the actual units that are coming in so we've got the new lord uh the drazina drazina um i'm probably going to butcher these names i am so sorry but it's the new lord type we're going to be getting it is a hybrid lord so it sits with the uh kislev theme so he's got a bow and arrow and an axe so he's probably got armor piercing and long range missile attacks so um yeah he's a hybrid unit he's missile units enhanced so units nearby will be benefited from increased missile stats and then he replenishes ammo uh cool unit i think it's very fitting for kislev is it really fitting for mother estankia as such no i don't think so i think it's still going to be a bit weird that you're playing mother estankia and you don't have any hag mothers to be control of your armies and said you're going to have actual kislevites it seems a bit weird but anyway moving on uh the next one the golden knight which is the new legendary hero um I'm going to go on to the Golden Knight. I think the Golden Knight is a very cool legendary hero. I think it's very suited for a legendary hero, but not for all of Kislev. For those of you that don't know, the law of the uh, Golden Knight is basically the bodyguard of the Tsarina of the time. So at the in the case of Warhammer 3, it's Katarine. He is the person, or she in this case, is the personal bodyguard for Katarine. And I think Katarine's bodyguard's um, father was the bodyguard for Boris. So they sort of pass down in generation to generation, but the pit person that is in charge of Kislev has a golden knight to protect them, uh, basically like a personal bodyguard. So it's really cool for a legendary hero. But again, it doesn't make sense for Mother Estankia. It just doesn't make sense. And I think it should be one of those legendary heroes which is exclusive to Boris and Katarin. Very similar to how Gorich is just with... Um, Throt the Unclean, for example, for the Skaven faction. I think this should be a unique legendary hero just for Katarin and just for Boris, but they seem to have given it to all of Kislev, which to me is a little bit weird. Gonna be honest, a little bit weird. Uh, but anyway, he is a bodyguard. Um, using her defensive abilities and stats to increase the durability of nearby friendly lords and heroes, so it probably has the, uh, is it Guardian effects? that increases their physical resistance probably something like that uh, inspiration the more damage sustained by the golden knight the more determined surrounding units uh, friendly units become in a fight so i'm guessing the more damage he takes the more leadership that everyone else gets very nice very unique and a duelist the golden knight's durability and powerful swords allows her to go toe to toe with melee lords and heroes so very good at taking out other legendary lords and heroes very good legendary hero not suited for Mother Estankia. Uh, moving on, the Kislevite Warriors. This is a very basic Hellbird unit. Uh, really nice frontline unit. Um, probably armor piercing anti large. Uh, I don't think it says anything about armor piercing though. Um, but it's a great pick for the early game. So this is a very low tier unit. I would say this is probably somewhere in between the uh, Corsars with spears and the Ice Guard. So it'd probably be like a mid tier unit, maybe a tier two unit. Um, very good frontline unit. Um, yeah, so basically it's just a Hellbird unit. Maybe it's got armor pitting, maybe it doesn't. It doesn't say anything about that. Um, but anyway, nothing really to say about it. Again, 
Doesn't really suit Mother of Stankia, but moving on. And the last one, the Frost Worm. Uh, this is a dragon-like creature, which is on the ground. Uh, it's a monstrous unit. It is very fast uh, creature, which enables um, it to maneuver through positions quicker than most. So, yeah, just a very fast cre creature. Has frostbite, so uh, the contact effect will slow down enemies. And it is a mount for Katarin and Ice Witches, which is really cool, actually. Having this as a mount for Katarin is really nice. As you can see, she's sitting on that there. But moving on to the last thing, which I think will be what most people would want for Katarin, is finally her ice court sled. So this is her sled that Katarin is going to get, is unique to her. No other lord or hero is going to be getting this. As you can see, it's just for Katarin. And it's got like the wind, so pulled by six finer steeds that Kislev, <clears throat> that Kislev has to offer. The ice court sled is the quickest way for Katarin to move around the battlefield. Um, and then the next ability, the momentum of the sled allows it to push through enemy infantry lines with ease, making it an effective unit for dis uh, distributing and confusing, um, oh, sorry, disturbing and confusing enemy formations. And then the Ice Guard crew, two members of the Ice Guard, fire their bows from the sled, allowing it to also be used as a missile chariot in a pinch. So, very cool. And uh, we also have a little thing here to show what happened. We'd had originally in Shadows of Change 2.0 and then the updated version. And that's it. That's it for Kislev. No different start locations. No different change to mechanics. A few units, only one of which really suits Mother Estankia. Uh, the rest of them are just kind of meh. They're okay. Uh, the Frostworm is definitely the highlight here for me. The Golden Knight is also very good, but like I said doesn't suit Mother Estankia and should just be completely unique for Katarin. And that's it now. We have all of the changes that we're going to be getting for the Shadows of Change 2.0. Uh, I think Cathay is the biggest winner here. I think Zinch is the biggest loser. I think Zinch's rework was actually pretty bad, to be honest. Um, they were all just reskins. Like the Flaming Chariot of Zinch we already have which is a flamer on top of a chariot flying in the air. And now you've just taken it off a chariot and then just put it on a disc and call it a new unit. Okay, cool. Um, I think the highlight for Kislev is definitely the Law of Hags and the Frostworm. Uh, but the other units I honestly don't care about. This is cool. Nice new Lord type. Fine. It's okay. And then the Legendary Hero are cool, but the rest of the units are a little bit. Yeah, and the Frostworm is good. Um, so I'm kind of mixed feelings, to be honest, about this update. Uh, I guess we'll have to see how it plays out in-game. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for the Kids Left side of things. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.